Last flight went really great. I was really happy with it, but afterwards I realized a couple things inside the rocket broke and needed to be repaired. A lot of these are kind of minor. They're structural parts in the TVC mechanism, so I went in and had to fix them. I ended up using some of the processes I developed in building my submarine to enhance the strength of the TVC mechanism in my Falcon 9 rocket. Um, this is a great example of a crossover technology where I came up with a process and a method for doing something on one project and it was applicable to another one. So this is a great example of how you can learn things by going outside of your original bubble. I applied a few coats of resin to the plastic parts in the rocket's thrust vector control mechanism and as a result it's a lot stronger now and I don't believe I'll have the same breakages that I had on landing from the previous launch. The resin makes the parts much stronger and I don't think I'll see the same breakages in the future. From there it's just on to reassembly and reintegration of all the parts back into the vehicle. I did a lot of changes on the inside in the software, so there was a lot of testing in the meantime before putting everything back together. I assembled the rocket in a few steps where the vectoring mount goes in first, then I put in some fire retardant between the engine mount and the avionics, and then I have a new addition, which is a camera. So now there is an HD camera and a small window in the side of the rocket to record flight footage on the way up and down. It's a little more weight, but the camera is completely decased, meaning it's lighter. And as an added bonus, it also runs off the internal power. So I've snipped the wires on the original battery inside the action cam and it runs off the flight battery. So that saves a little bit more weight. I set up the camera at a 45 degree angle so that it can look down and outward so that you get a great perspective of both the horizon and the ground as the rocket ascends into the air. At this point I have a really good handle for how all the parts can go together and I can assemble the rocket and disassemble the rocket rather quickly. So it makes installation of all of these parts a breeze. So because Flight 4 went so successfully I decided to absolutely change everything in the flight software. Much of the flight software was written in a way that I added and features and removed features and commented things uh, in a way that it wasn't very clean and easy to look at. So the software revision cleaned up a lot of the things that were no longer in use and it added a lot of features I had been looking into adding but had not yet had the chance to. I was also able to do a lot more integrated testing, which really helped the final product of the software. One of the things I decided to do was put my rocket in an elevator and basically have that ascend and be able to look at the data. With these types of machines, it's really hard to test certain phases of the flight and the transient phase between flight mode one and two, where the rocket leaves the pad and it detects acceleration, is hard to test on the bench because if I move the rocket up, I also stop my hand and apply an equal and opposite acceleration. So I get this kind of bang bang acceleration really fast. But when I'm in the elevator, it's purely an upward acceleration because it's like the engine is on, albeit at a much lower acceleration than the actual rocket engine. So as the rocket ascends, it may slow down and the sensor can kind of measure on either side of what the true value is. So you can get false positives for the rocket actually reaching that apogee point. And it read apogee in the previous flight a lot earlier than it actually was. The new software looks at more of a trend versus just the last two points. So by looking at a longer window of data points, I can get a more accurate view of when I've actually crested that peak of Apogee and the rocket's actually falling again. I added another really great feature that I've been wanting to implement but haven't yet. Um, the hardware on my launch pad has a connection for two-way communication with the rocket, which I've yet to implement until now. Now, in the current software revision, the rocket communicates back to the pad that it has properly health check completed and it's ready for launch. The launch pad now has a new line of software as well where it does a T-2 hold uh, 
to check if the rocket has signed off on completing the flight. Having a two-way communication between the rocket and the pad is really important when it comes to saving rocket motors and weeding out unsuccessful launches. I had several in the past where the launch pad launched the rocket without the rocket actually being ready to fly. The new handshake lines of code are really great because they prevent anything from happening without both parties agreeing. And that'll save me a lot of headaches in the future and crashed rockets. Not only can the rocket sign off on its health being ready to fly, the launch pad can also await the rocket's ignition before letting it go to prevent any damage to the vehicle. Finally, I put the rocket back on the test stand and I did more propeller tests to tune it. And things seem to be going pretty good. But at some point in the process, the flight computer completely broke. I don't know exactly why, but I think one of the connectors that connects the rocket to the flight computer um, ended up having a short form across one of the terminals and it completely blew the entire electronics package. Uh, this was kind of a major setback, so I had to go back in, resolder everything, remove any parts I could, and put together another flight controller. At that point, I went completely back into integrated software testing and I started trying to add more and more features. Even with my limited time on the propeller test stand and trying to tune the rocket, I found a few major flaws with some of the orientation and command uh, processing. So the rocket PVC mechanism developed a large jitter in the last few runs of testing, and I believe my software was just sending it garbage data. I went in and completely revamped how the orientation processing works as well. I hadn't originally planned to do this because I thought it was working pretty well, but going back in and reworking it really paid dividends. I was able to connect the flight controller to the computer and read live data out of it, and then use that data to determine what was actually going on with the orientation. There ended up being an issue where the gyro data was drifting at a constant rate. So I went in and plotted that, and using those plots, I plotted a regression line. So that's just a line that best fits the data. Uh, and that gave me an equation, and that equation tells me the slope of the line and how much the gyroscope is actually drifting inside the rocket. This allows you to debias the gyroscope because it's drifting at a constant rate, and you can just subtract out that rate over time. After adding this correction, it made the gyroscope much more locked in, and you wouldn't even see any drift over longer spans of time. Adding a filter on the gyro data really helps smooth out a lot of the small variations that the sensor just produces by being on. And that really gives you a lot better data when you're trying to run longer flight times and if you're sitting on the pad for a longer amount of time as well. I learned from the previous flights that I need to zero all my orientations right before launch. So I have that as well. So it really all kind of comes together to give you great orientation data over the course of the flight and 
it makes it as accurate as possible to what the real world is because the sensor after all is just a piece of hardware trying to measure that and if it's set up improperly then it will give you improper angles and you'll have a bad time. The exponential moving average filter is really cool because it just looks at how much things are changing and if they're changing a lot then it doesn't really do anything but if they're barely changing then it ends up kind of reducing the amount that things are changing relative to each other. So small changes in the gyro are not captured as much as big ones. I'm getting really close to a launch, so I wanted to actually produce a video to talk about some of these challenges. Um, a lot of the work on these projects is in the software, so hours and hours of work goes into software for just a few seconds of flight. I think the addition of the new filters, the debiasing of the gyro, and a lot of the stronger parts inside the rocket that are now coated in resin will make for a much stronger launch system, and those will carry on to some of my other things like my SLS rocket and my new Glenn. I also have plans to move to a new flight controller in the future that's a lot better, but all of this software can still be run on that one as well because it uses the same basic microcontroller architecture. I wanted to give an update because I hadn't done a launch in a while, and that's due to a lot of external factors. I ended up moving residents, and I, uh, I didn't have much time to work on stuff. So lately it's been mostly software and a few of the setbacks with microcontroller breaking and having to build a new flight controller have kind of happened behind the scenes and those don't really make for good content, but a lot of the problem solving in the software I felt is something I wanted to highlight in its own video here. So yeah, if you like you know this content, you know consider subscribing um, or if you really like it, uh, go on to Patreon. Um, I post all my updates there sooner and I have access to a lot of the files and the new flight controller information is all on there as well. So that's gonna be really great to get running and I'll have access to those board files and the component list for them on there as well. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video. At this point, I'm just kind of rambling. So I think we'll just end it. I had the great idea between Flight 4 and Flight 5 to just change the entire software, so we'll see how that all worked out.